Hello everyone and welcome back to Cherry Lanes, where today we're gonna go through how to make these sticky, chewy, yet dense and delectably fudgy brownies. I was looking for a texture that wasn't just fudgy, but sticky chewy, and I definitely didn't want any cakiness to it. Think Subway cookies kind of sticky chewy, but with that perfect density you can get from using box mix brownies. I needed it in my life, and I did a bunch of tests trying different recipes that were called ultimate brownies or the best or box mix type brownie recipes and while still yummy they weren't that perfect sticky chewy brownie texture I was looking for. If you follow me on my socials mainly Facebook or Instagram you've probably seen how many tests I've done for these to finally get the results I wanted and I'm so flippin stoked. Alright now enough talking and let's get straight into it. You will need 140 grams of unsalted butter, Half a cup, which is 110 grams of caster sugar, also known as superfine sugar. One tablespoon plus one teaspoon of firmly packed dark brown sugar, which is 28 grams that I used. 90 grams of your favorite semi-sweet dark chocolate. I'm using a 45% cocoa dark chocolate here. Half a cup, which is 45 grams of Dutch processed cocoa powder. And then on top of that, also another half a cup, which is 110 grams of caster sugar. Two large eggs one teaspoon of natural vanilla extract, half a teaspoon of salt, and finally half a cup, which is 72 grams of plain flour, and one teaspoon of corn flour, also known as cornstarch. Firstly, line a 7.5 inch square baking pan like this to ensure ease of removal after and set that aside. On a low to medium flame like this here, now you want to pop all of your butter in a small saucepan and melt that until completely liquid. So the smaller chunks that you cut up your butter, the faster this process will be and stirring the butter chunks as it melts will help to speed up this process a little. Now allow the butter to get to a bit of a simmer on a low flame to evaporate some of the water content in the butters until you start to see some of this white foamy butter fat rise to the top. And give it a quick stir now and just turn the heat off. Once the heat is off, immediately pour in half a cup of caster sugar and your 28 grams of dark brown sugar. Note that we are only using half of the caster sugar for this recipe in this step. Now using a rubber spatula, gently keep stirring the sugars until they start to dissolve and comes together with the butter forming a thick butterscotch paste. So this process might take about 10 minutes to come together, but make sure you keep stirring or the sugars will not bind together with the butter. In the start, it might seem like it's not binding together where there's a pool of butter just sitting on the top, but just be really patient and just keep stirring gently. Don't get too aggressive and splash your butter everywhere. Just go back and forth fast and in circular motions until it comes together. I like using a rubber spatula for this so that I can easily scrape down all the sides and corners of the saucepan as I stir this beautiful concoction. So once you have a butterscotch paste that looks thick like this, turn the heat back on to a low flame where you can see the flame is not touching the saucepan at all or you might accidentally burn your sugar and have to start all over again. You need to make sure that the sugars never come to a boil where if any bubbling starts to occur, you will end up causing the sugars to caramelize too much and separate from the butter. If that happens, your mixture might look something like this and no matter how much you stir it, it won't bind back together and you will unfortunately have to dump it out and start all over again or you will end up getting uneven, grainy or crunchy brownies. So to avoid this, just make sure that your flame is very, very low, not touching the saucepan at all, and then set a timer and very gently keep stirring on a low flame for 15 minutes until slightly thickened and completely smooth where it looks something like this. It's going to smell so amazing already at this point. Now, once this butterscotch caramel mixture is nice and thick, turn the heat off and keep stirring to gradually bring the temperature down to approximately 50 degrees Celsius. It should take about 20 minutes of stirring if you don't have a food thermometer. Keep stirring during this whole cooling down process or your sugars will separate from the butter. You can see my mixture is only 44 degrees because I had to transfer some footage halfway through filming, but ideally 50 degrees is the ideal temperature for you to dump all of your dark chocolate pieces in there for it to dissolve without burning. Now just keep stirring until there are no more chocolate pieces inside. Just gradually keep going around until completely dissolved and your mixture should look something like this. 
By then, your mixture should have cooled down to approximately 40 degrees Celsius. So now simply add all of your cocoa powder into the mix and very slowly start by folding in the cocoa until it starts to come together just like this and then now simply stir it in until all of the cocoa powder is completely dissolved and your mixture looks thick and gooey like this. It is completely normal to still see sugar grains in the mix. Simply set that aside to cool and now using a large mixing bowl, crack in two large eggs and give it a quick mix on a low speed to loosen up the eggs a little. Then pour in your other half a cup of caster sugar and starting on a low speed again before bringing it up to a medium to high speed. Here I'm using speed 4 out of a maximum of 9 and you want to mix that vigorously for about 3-5 to five minutes until pale and fluffy. Now pour in about a third of your chocolate mixture and mix that on a medium speed until just incorporated. Add in your vanilla extract and salt and continue mixing on a medium speed for about 20 seconds until incorporated. Then pour in the rest of your chocolate mixture, scraping down the sides of the saucepan, ensuring you get all of that glorious chocolate butterscotch into your mixing bowl. Now starting on a low speed again, Mix the thick chocolate mixture into your egg batter until you start to feel a bit of resistance and then you turn the mixer up to a medium to high speed of 4 to 5 and then just mix the living daylights out of this for about 2 to 3 minutes ensuring you scrape down the sides and the bottom as you go along to ensure you thoroughly incorporate all of the heavenly chocolate mixture evenly and you should get a thick batter that looks something like this. Where when you part the batter, the thick mixture should still kind of stay where you've pushed it. Now in a small bowl, using a hand whisk, thoroughly mix the plain flour and corn flour together until very well incorporated. It is very important for the corn flour to be evenly distributed throughout the plain flour or you may get an uneven consistency in your brownies. Once that's done, pour the flour mixture into your chocolate batter and fold the flour in using a rubber spatula or a wooden spoon. Do not use your electric mixer nor a hand whisk for this step or you might end up activating the gluten in the flour and risk making your brownies too cakey and fluffy and we don't want that. The mixture should feel quite thick so you might have to use a little bit of muscle in folding the flour in. So folding looks like this where as you can see I like cutting through the middle and then fold over and under and sometimes you see I do this cut fold and then a little smush then over and under and you just keep folding it in and you'll know it's ready when there are no more streaks of flour left inside. At this stage is where you can fold in half a cup or more of whatever brownie fillings your heart desires. Chocolate chips, marshmallows, anything at all. But here I'm just showing you a simply divine, unembellished, sticky, chewy, fudgy brownie. So you plop all the batter into your baking pan and carefully use a small angled spatula or the back of a spoon to smooth the batter as evenly as you can. Ensure your oven is preheated to 180 degrees Celsius and set the timer for 27 minutes removing the brownies after 20 minutes to give it a quick bang on a heat-proof mat to deflate it like so, and stick it back in for the remaining 7 minutes. Banging the air out midway will help you achieve a much more even brownie where there won't be a gap between the middle and the crust. You'll know your brownies are done when you stick a skewer into the middle and it comes out with just a few crumbs stuck to it. Once your brownies are cool enough to touch, simply pick up two sides of the baking paper to remove it easily from the pan. Now using a sharp knife, simply slice down on your brownies ensuring you don't drag the knife, cleaning off all the sticky crumbs between each slice until you have 9 deliciously sticky, chewy and fudgy brownie squares. The edges are definitely more sticky and chewy compared to the middle. Let's have a listen. Mm. Just like box mix brownies, but if I dare say so myself, I think this is even better than any brownie recipe I have personally ever tried. This recipe definitely takes a bit more effort than the usual brownie recipes you can find online, but personally so worth it for that sticky, chewy and fudgy brownie perfection. And if you're like me and love, love sticky, chewy brownie edges, I recommend you baking these in little well-greased cupcake trays so that every single brownie cup is delightfully sticky and chewy with the middle just perfectly fudgy. 
And as always, the full recipe and more details are in the description. And if you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook or Instagram to stay connected. And till next time, I'm Cherry Lane. Stay well, everybody.